you cannot consider my work without looking at my personal life circumstances. My work is an embodiment of my response to the world and the life that I have lived. This whole body of work is a reflection of an artist in exile. One of the fantastic things about getting to know your work is coming to a more textured idea of Iran. What are your memories of growing up there? Yeah, um, you know, Ghazvin was um, an extremely religious city. There was always this contradiction in terms of my family being very modern and not overly religious but being in an environment that they had to kind of shield their private lives to some degree. So really, I think that's the most vivid thing that comes to my mind, that form of contradiction that existed both inside of my home and the city at large. I was sent by my father to accompany my sister in Los Angeles in 1975. I enrolled in a high school in Westwood without speaking any English. I was immediately very alienated. Meanwhile, my sister returned to Iran and I found myself alone just at the start of the revolution. It was an excruciating period because I was emotionally cut off from the family. By the time I finished graduate school at UC Berkeley, I rushed over to New York where I tried to start a new chapter of my life. And in 1990, finally, I made a trip back to Iran. It was the first time I saw my family after over 11 years, but also my first return after the revolution. My personal life, my artistic life, all converged in this return to Iran and it just gave me a purpose. It gave me an urge to become an artist again. And the art becoming this vehicle of maintaining this relationship between me and my lost country and my lost family. When I came back to New York, it sort of culminated in trying to establish certain visual vocabulary that somehow translated some of these issues and ideas into images as opposed to words. The ambiguity that exists in almost every image from a woman of Allah was exactly my intention in many ways by making the images as paradoxical as possible. Those moments between 79 and 1997, so up close and personal, so specifically about the global moment. But then with the entrance into magical realism and metaphor and symbol in your films, you start to think about some of the deeper legacies of Iran. Could you describe that transition into metaphor and symbol that you continue to explore? The move away from still photography and embracing the moving picture already allowed a certain fluidity, certain lyricism, certain style of working that refused to be didactic. And that by allowing landscape, choreography, theatrical intentions, performance, all of these led to an experience that was very immersive. and that really freed me to create a more mystical atmosphere, mood. That the work would be absolutely ambiguous, absolutely would beg for multiple interpretations. That has been my intention, to build layers of meanings, but also seduce the people with the form. Iranian culture is deeply inside of our blood and in our subconscious and in our psyche, even if we live outside longer than in our own country. The more we're pressed to let go of Persian history, the more 
we seem to embrace it. The title of your new work, Land of Dreams, is immediately ironic. The cliché about the United States as being a bastion for exiles, a place where people can go and thrive in freedom, that has become a bitter irony these days. My immediate impulse to make this project was without a doubt a reaction to what's happening in this country and that I felt compelled as an immigrant, as an Iranian Muslim, to give my perspective. In the film, this Iranian protagonist goes to New Mexico as an agent of the Iranian culture. She begins to identify with the American people, but not just their daily lives, but their dreams. And oddly, she finds that their nightmares and their dreams are not that different from her own. And I think that is ultimately the message of this work. My intention was to create a work that, of course, opens up the notion of fanaticism, the evil and the demon that lives on both sides. Who is the victim? It's the people of those nations, the humanity that is in danger, the inner and the outer world, the imagination versus the skeleton of the human body, the emotions versus the realism. That kind of contradiction, that kind of dynamic of the good and evil all happening, that just suits my nature as an artist and as a person.